They fly through the air on broomsticks. So what kind of a woman was she? And why was she accused of witchcraft? But it leads to the question, if you can write a book about this. Well, on this Hallow's Eve, we're constantly reminded of all sorts of ghouls and goblins, warlocks and witches. But did you know that there are actual real life witches that walk among us every single day? In today's video, we're going to be talking about a woman who went by the name Hannah Cranna that was well known in Connecticut during the 17 and 1800s. Hannah Cranna was also known as the Wicked Witch of Monroe, and the legend of her is still spoken about today and will send shivers down your spine. Hannah Cranna still has the Wicked Witch reputation till this day, over 150 years later. Now her real name was Hannah Hovey and she was married to a man named Captain Joseph Hovey, but sometime in her life, she adopted the name Hannah Cranna, which is the name she's most known by other than the Wicked Witch of Monroe. She was born in 1783 and would end up passing in the year 1860 at the age of 77. Now that's something you're gonna wanna keep in mind because I'll be telling you its significance later in the story. Now, Hannah didn't exactly live a normal life like everyone else. Many locals of Monroe speculated that she had deep interest in black magic, but it said she didn't really gather the reputation as the Wicked Witch until her husband, Joseph Hovey, would pass away. Now, this is where the story begins to get interesting. Many of the locals of Monroe speculated that Hannah was somehow involved in the death of her husband. Legend has it that one late night, Captain Joseph Hovey went out for a walk and mysteriously fell off a cliff, resulting in his death. Many didn't believe that Joseph was someone who would have such an unfortunate accident. Whispers began flowing through the community that people believed Hannah Cranna, the Wicked Witch of Monroe, had put some type of spell or curse on her husband, causing the result of his death. Hannah has always been known for her aggressive nature, but once she became a widow, her energy became amplified. She would demand her neighbors give her things like free food and firewood. And if they didn't comply with her demands, it was her questionable reputation she would rely on and threaten the ones who didn't please her. One day, Hannah requested that the wife of one of the local farmers give her one of her freshly baked pies. The woman went on to deny her and Hannah decided to curse the woman. Ever since that day, the woman has never been able to bake again. Another story about Hannah, the Wicked Witch, is apparently one day after catching a man fishing for trout in a small stream on her property without her permission, Hannah laid a curse on him, causing him to never catch a fish again. Over the years, other incidents that demonstrated her otherworldly powers supposedly occurred solidifying her reputation as the Wicked Witch of Monroe, allowing her to have power over the locals. It's said that from her house that was located on Crag Hill, which was allegedly guarded by snakes, she would help those who respected her and poured down misery on those who crossed her. But even after all of these situations, it wouldn't be until she died and was buried that her legend of the Wicked Witch of Monroe would be cemented. It was said that Hannah kept a rooster named Old Boris, which many speculated was her companion. One day, the rooster that she was so attached to crowed its last crow. Hannah then told the neighbor that her end was also near. 
she would go on to tell the neighbor, my coffin must be carried by hand to my grave, and I must not be buried before sundown. The very next day after Hannah had this conversation with the neighbor, she would end up passing away. The day of the burial, it began snowing heavily. So the locals decided that rather than follow her instructions, it would be easier to pull her casket across the snow on a sled. But as the procession started toward the cemetery, the coffin came off the sled and slid all the way back to her front door. They would try again, but they were met with more trouble. With the locals believing it was the wicked witch causing the issues, they decided to honor her wishes and just carry her to the graveyard. After much struggling, they eventually got the old witch into her grave just after sunset. Happy to finally have her gone, they returned to Hannah's home, at which that time, they discovered her house completely engulfed in flames. Like any good legend, there was always more stories to follow throughout the years. The most popular legend with Hannah Crana is that from time to time, a woman will appear in the middle of Spring Hill Road, causing drivers to swerve and lose control of their vehicle, crashing into the Wicked Witch's gravestone. Most of the time, costing the driver their life. Now let's go back to the age she died at, the age of 77. This is what's said about the number 77. When it comes to twin flames, twin flame relationships have a tendency to go through ups and downs. Fortunately, the number 77 represents your angels telling you to look forward to a time of peace, happiness, and harmony with your twin flame. Was it just a coincidence or were Hannah's angels giving her a sign that she would find peace and happiness after a long time of misery and she would be reunited with her long lost husband? Now I want to know what you believe about Hannah Crana, the Wicked Witch of Monroe. Is it just a legend or is there something a lot deeper going on as a result of black magic? We usually think of uh, Salem, Massachusetts, and we think about the witch trials in the 17th century. But did you know Connecticut has its own witch trial history? Why don't people know about it? Because when, when people think of New England witch trials in that time, it's only Salem. The Salem trials really was a period of hysteria in 1692. That unfolded over a short period of time. Seven months, yeah. seven months, very short period of time. They broke many of the rules as far as judicial proceedings go. But here in Connecticut, from the time that we convicted and executed the very first witch in 1647, it really was business as usual for us. How many people were killed because they were, were allegedly witches? Uh, there were 11. They were all hanged. Uh, there were 34 people who were formally accused. Uh, historians believe that up to 50 actually were under suspicion. Many people, when they realized that the magistrates were looking at them, actually fled to Rhode Island and New York. 